I wanted to while we're on the the subject of like Universal and Disney and and the competition factor. I wanted to bring into this conversation the Marvel deal, the elephant in the room. Um, for those of you at home that are not familiar, Marvel, before they were bought out by Disney, they signed a a contract with Universal that everything, what is it, east of the Mississippi, it, it, you know, is basically theirs. So, I mean, like Universal is the only one that can do anything Marvel east of the Mississippi. Um, now, this only includes, from what I understand, the characters that currently exist in Island of Adventure. So that's not necessarily the, the, you know, the ancillary material like Eternals and things like that. So anything that's represented in the current superhero island, Disney can't do it in Florida at Walt Disney World. Um, so I wanted to touch upon this deal. Dre, I'll start with you. What do you think about the deal and what do you think about the chances of Disney kind of working something out to get these rights back? Or is it pretty much, you know what, lost forever? Do you think that this is never going to happen? Bob Iger had tried um, and their team had had tried to kind of coax uh, Universal. Uh, I'm sorry, Comcast in giving up those rights and. You know, back at back in that day, the 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 price was a little bit too rich for their blood. Um, from what I understand, they wanted Comcast wanted uh, Disney to tank Oz the Great and Powerful before it came out, like like get rid of it entirely because they were coming out with um, oh, what's that musical Wicked. called? Wicked, Wicked. yeah. Uh, okay. You know, their 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 film and their film franchise and that kind of stuff going forward and. Disney, and that was just one step too far for them. And then the, the, the talks broke off. And so now we have Chapek in there. And honestly, I mean, I, I, the, you know, the, the one opportunity that it is presented with Chapek being in the seat is, hey, can we restart these negotiations? Can we restart these talks? You know, um, because look, Chapek, he, he's, he's a consumer products guy. He's a merch guy, you know. Um, you know, to, to Disney Family Man's point, it's not just about who visits uh, um, these parks, but, but well, it's not about how many, but it's about, it's about you know, who and, 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 and who spends, who spends the big dollars. And when international tourists go over to Islands of Adventure and go to Wizarding World, they spend a lot of money. I mean, it's not outrageous to spend, you know, for a family of four to spend like $2,000 at the Wizarding World. I mean, it's 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 crazy business. It's crazy numbers. Um, and I'm not saying that Marvel, you know, would do that. But again, we don't know because it, we just never gone down that route. Uh, if if I were Chay Peck right now, I would definitely start those negotiations. Look, yeah. they have Simpsons. Um, they have a Marvel presence right now. Honestly, what I would do is, hey, look, Simpsons stays under the previously established contract we get access to the mcu characters the mcu brand your stuff is grandfathered in we take a little bit more of the uh you know merchandise licensing um uh, fees because I, I i don't think it's a percentage i think it's just a straight fee at the at the end of the year kind of thing um in in it you know and in compensation for all that, we give you a big wad of cash because that's what really, what it's really going to take. Because there's no incentive for, for for Universal or for Comcast to do anything else. So if you can get those talks back up, man, that that would, you know, that would ingratiate himself with uh, with fans. <laughs> that that's for sure. I mean, that it's a huge. It's huge. Do you think there's any possibility, Dre? Then I'm going to go on to uh, to Rudy and Disney Family Man. But real quick, I wanted sure. to ask you: Do you think there's any possibility? that a, a possible deal with Comcast in regards to the Marvel rights might include maybe like a uh, sweet little package in regards to like streaming, you know, like Disney plus is, is mm. destroying Peacock in the yeah. streaming wars. Uh, is it possible Disney could trade, you know, those Marvel rights, the theme park rights for, for maybe some sort of like multi-year deal with Peacock to have Marvel movies on Peacock or something to that effect is, is some sort of that, is, is that possible where they, where they, it would, it would transcend beyond just the parks and they would actually kind of use the, the streaming and, and the actual content as leverage. Is that possible? Well, I, 
anything's possible now. I mean, some of the deals being churned out in Hollywood right now because the streaming wars are on uh, in full force. Uh, we've seen some crazy deals like Sony uh, d doing deals with, uh, with, with Disney and some other studios to try to get, you know, the Spider-Man films in, in multiple platforms in various states. Um, I, honestly, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see something like that. I could see something where, where where you know Disney kind of trades some theme park rights for some licensing rights and 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 those kind of things. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I could see it. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the best way to go forward. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Um, George, Disney Family Man. Um, what are your thoughts on the Marvel deal? What 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 you know? How can Disney get these rights back? Is it a lost cause? What are your thoughts? I think right now Disney feels like they have the upper hand, uh, being that they pretty much have, I don't want to say a full monopoly, but let's just say if you have an extra $5,000 to take to the poker game, guess what? You're going to risk it and say, you know what? I'm going to throw my money in. All, all bets are in, you know. And what I mean by that is that right now, Marvel cannot do anything more with the superhero island. However it is, is how it stands. True. So Disney has that upper hand to say, hey, yeah, all – Marvel's coming out with more stuff, but guess what, Universal? You can't do not one thing with it. However, though, each time that someone does go into that land in Universal, and as Chapek is a consumer product person, it's all about the almighty dollar, you know, and also with The Simpsons. Anybody who purchases anything, Disney gets partial of that. You know, so it's more of the say, it's like, well, yeah, you can keep it, but you're going to keep paying us some royalties here. You know, just, you know, you want to keep it, go ahead, keep it. But I think in the long run, Universal will eventually give in. They're just waiting for the right deal that Disney will throw at them. And I think it's pretty much to say, hey, you know what? This is something important to us as well. We're not just going to give it up just for anything. You know, it has to be a really good deal and as vash had pointed out i think if you know anything is possible if you know if the right deal comes along i think universal will bite and it's just to the notion that i think when epic universe comes out um and all those lands expand sort of how what they do with the wizarding world of harry potter they have a harry potter section in each of the parks you know you have uh diagon alley at universal studios you have hogwarts at islands of adventure i believe epic universe is getting the ministry of magic you know so now with uh the super nintendo world coming to epic universe you know universal could be have something in their back pocket to say hey if we end up getting rid of marvel superhero island that could be an extension of super nintendo because there was a lot of concept art of what was going to be super nintendo world and i think as far as i know it's going to be uh, a yoshi type of kid ride the donkey kong cart coaster and then the the mario kart but then there was also talks about uh little mini lands within super nintendo world it was supposed to be uh zelda kirby you know so if they want to extend anything they could say hey we could take a property that disney really wants if they want it, go ahead, go for it, and we can do something else with it in the future. I think they are going to decide once Epic Universe is up and running and seeing how popular it is with the people. Yeah, you bring up some great points, George, and I think that you, you, you touched upon something that I think is very valid in that there's not going to be any more expansions of Marvel Superhero Island. Disney's not going to allow that. They can really only kind of upkeep and, and plus what they currently have and it is becoming increasingly increasingly um, dated because young people nowadays, when they think of Marvel, it's the MCU that they associate it with. They don't really associate it with the comics. I mean, there are some, you know, there are some people that do associate with the comics, but for the most part, the normies, the general public associates it with the MCU. And the Islands of Adventure version is very comic booky. And it's starting to look a little dated. And I don't think that's going to change, obviously, anytime soon. There might be an incentive um, for Universal to make that deal, depending on what Disney offers, obviously. But there might be some incentive 
Uh, Rudio, what are your thoughts on, on the Marvel deal, man? Like, what, what do you think? Is this kind of like, do you think that Disney could possibly gain these rights back or is it kind of like a lost cause? Uh, and Rudy, uh, Rudy, I'm sorry, before you go and I just have one more thing to say for all you Malaboomer fans out there that you missed it at DCA, come on over to Universal. You can go in Dr. Doom's Fearfall. So <laughs> <laughs> That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Um, I kind of want to latch on to what George said about if Universal wants to give up land. So right. my big intrigue is here at Universal Hollywood. Um, the way it's configured is that Hogsmeade is positioned right next to Springfield. So in what I think is more likely to happen than a Marvel deal is a Simpsons deal. Only for the simple fact that I think Disney sees how much value there is in the Simpsons, considering the last time I heard or the last time I've really uh, seen some recognition of it is that the Simpsons is probably one of the uh, highest rated uh, shows on Disney Plus. That's true. Yeah. So they see the popularity and it's still and the fact that at D23 2019, we saw walk-around characters that Disney had made uh, costumes for. So they're ready to go as far as Disney wanting to bring them into the fan presence of possibly the parks. So what would it be, what would it take for Disney to go to the head of Universal and say, let's get a deal, let's get a deal done. We'll take the Simpsons off your hands you get your land back. You want to expand uh, Hogsmeade, make it whatever you want. Want to expand whatever you want to do. I'm sure Universal kind of wants to do it at this point because uh, The Simpsons at this point is what nine or not nine, ten years old at least. Oh, the land. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think it, I think it opened in like 2008 or something. Yeah, it's pretty old so, now. Yeah, so we're getting at 13 years you now or so. And what would we say is the lifespan? average of a universal attraction 25 20 years yeah i would say roughly around that time yeah and i think islands of adventure is what 22 years old at this point open in 99 so yeah. there's an average lifespan of these attractions that universal goes through i mean i miss a lot of the attractions that they've gone through with et i, I love et and i love back to the future R.I.P. I see you, Bash. I see you crying. <laughs> I know. I am. I am.